Zemu all in all isn't that tricky to get set up. However, I do see a few key things missed from some tutorials. So in this video, I'm gonna be providing a super quick setup guide, but covering those things that are generally missed, including a key optimization for Nvidia graphics cards. If you're familiar with my stuff, you know I don't mess about, so let's just get straight into it. So obviously you need to go to the XEMU website and there's two things that you need to get from here. The actual emulator itself and the virtual hard drive. Hard drive information doesn't just save to a normal folder, it needs a virtual hard drive to operate correctly. So you want to click on download in the top left hand corner and you can get the emulator for Windows or for Mac OS. After you've got that, you want to go over to required files on the left hand side. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and download the pre-formatted Xbox hard disk image. When it comes to BIOS files, you need to grab the standard ones that contain the MCPX boot ROM image. And then on top of that, you need to get the modified retail complex 4627 BIOS. This one does work better, but it doesn't contain the MCPX boot ROM image that you need from the standard ones. So grab both. Once you've got all four of those, you want to unzip them like I've already done here. Then just open up the emulator folder. And the first thing we need to do is create a new BIOS folder. So go to new folder and call it BIOS. Then you want to move all of your BIOS files into that BIOS folder. So we're gonna move all of the normal Xbox ones into that folder, and then move all of the complex ones into that folder. Nice and easy. And with the virtual hard disk drive, just move that into the root of Zemu. Nice and easy. It's definitely recommended to use portable mode, which saves all of your stuff to this folder here, rather than on a user profiles folder in your C drive. And to do this, you just wanna right click, go to new and create a new text document. And you want to override the entire text with xemu.toml. Then save it, press yes to this, and that's it. Then all you need to do is start the emulator. And when you do, it should bring up this setup screen. Now these two top options, you definitely want to leave at default. 128 megabytes for system memory is really for debugging or for homebrew games. An AV pack, obviously you want to leave this on HDTV, unless you have a specific reason to use one of the others. Now we need to point Zemu to our BIOS files and our virtual hard drive. So just click on the MCPX boot ROM, go into your BIOS files for Zemu, and then select the MCPX bin file, then click open. Then you want to do the same for the flash ROM. So click on this and make sure that you're selecting the complex 4627 bin. Then press open. And then with the hard disk, go to the root folder of Zemu and then select the hard drive. With the EEPROM, Zemu should create this and set the path for you. Now we can move up to the input section in the top left hand corner. Now Zemu doesn't let you reassign any controls. So you do need a dual analog stick controller to get the most out of this. And keep in mind that black and white are assigned to L1 and R1. To assign a controller, all you have to do is select one of the ports and then select the controller that you want to assign to it. Nice and easy. You can also create memory units for both expansion slots if you wanted to. Save states don't really come in handy for emulation unless you really wanted to share save states. For me personally, I don't tend to use them. So moving on to the display tab with internal resolution scale. Increasing this makes your graphics look better, but where you can have this by default is very much performance dependent. Personally, for my hardware, I set this to times two and then increase it or decrease it accordingly. Now this full screen mode will toggle between full screen and windowed mode and full screen on startup does exactly what it says on the tin and I recommend activating it. Now you can change the window size to something else if you want to, but I like to leave it as is. And you definitely want to leave VSync on. These interface options pretty much come down to personal preference, so I'll just leave you to your own devices with those. Now, despite Zemu having all of these options available, there are some options that are simply not available from within the UI. And these are the options that you'd set on the actual Xbox itself. In other words, the EEPROM settings. Normally with other consoles, this wouldn't matter, but there's two settings that we need access to. And that's setting proper anamorphic widescreen and setting 60 Hertz for power region games. Doing that from within the Zemu UI is impossible. So we need to use an EEPROM editor. So I'll put the link for this GitHub page in the description below and you wanna download the most recent version from the releases on the right hand side and then just download this zip. Once you've downloaded it, obviously you wanna unzip it like I've already done here, then open up the folder. Now all this does is creates a brand new EEPROM and replaces it with your old one. So you wanna start the EXE up and you've got a whole bunch of custom options to create your own personalized EEPROM. Now obviously you can change any of these options to however you want it to be. You can change the region, the video standard, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But the only things that I tend to change in here are the video options in this section. 
I would activate 480p so those native 480p games will automatically run in that mode. I will activate this widescreen option for proper anamorphic widescreen and I also like to activate 60Hz for good measure. Once you've got everything set exactly how you want it to be, just go up to File, Save As, go into your XEMU folder, click on the EEPROM bin and then press Save and make sure that you replace it. And that's it. Now when you play a widescreen game, it's going to be displayed in proper anamorphic widescreen and not stretched. Just make sure that you also set 16x9 in the Zemu settings. Now if a game doesn't have native widescreen support, don't worry, you can still set 4x3 to get it to display at its native aspect ratio. Now something that I generally see missed in other setup guides is this performance optimization for Nvidia graphics cards. It is recommended to disable any multi-threaded optimizations. So you want to start the NVIDIA control panel up and make sure that you go to 3D settings. Then scroll pretty much all the way down to the bottom to this threaded optimization option. Obviously we want to turn this off but for only the Zemu emulator as you should be leaving this on auto in your global settings. So you want to click on program settings at the top here. Then you want to click on this add button. Then select the Zemu emulator then press add selected program. Then just scroll all the way down to the bottom to threaded optimization and turn it off. Make sure that you hit apply and once that's done, XEMU is running as good as it can with NVIDIA graphics cards. The format your games need to be in for XEMU is XISO. These generally show up as ISO files. And if your games are not in that format, you can always use this tool to convert them. But there are loads of conversion tools out there so just take your pick. All you need to do to actually start a game is go to machine in the top left hand corner, load disk, select it and it should load up. Now once you're in game, if you go up to view, you can change all of these visual options and they'll be updated in real time. And also if you go over to debug, go down to video, you can check on your performance as you're doing it. Now when it comes to compatibility, things are definitely much better than what they used to be. However, I feel some expectation does need to be set to avoid frustration. So as a Halo machine, Zemu works just fine, but you are definitely going to come across some games that are broken with their visuals or with their performance. And just because you see the nice green of this playable status doesn't necessarily mean that it's enjoyable. A game could be completable front to back but at only 5 frames per second. Technically playable yes, but whether that's enjoyable is down to the tolerance of the user. Which makes this compatibility page absolutely essential when you're playing around with Zemu. Now if you look at this percentage bar all the way on the right hand side, we've got 5% in blue. If you click on this, these are all the games that run perfectly. I've tested a few of these out and they do indeed absolutely run flawlessly. Everything that's in green and deemed to be playable does technically have some issue to some kind of degree. It could be just a minor audio issue in some minor part of the game that you're probably not even going to notice. In which case it's all but perfect but it's that one minor thing keeping it from perfect status. And other games are going to have more glaring issues with missing graphics, effects, glitches and or slowdown. And the nice thing with this compatibility page, if you click on any of these titles, you get a log of all of the known issues. Also in the description below, I'm going to provide a link to this list of games which have performance issues. So you know which ones you might need to factor in performance with or which ones may not work at all. Now for anyone watching this thinking that Xbox emulation is somehow inferior or just not up to date, that isn't the case. Unfortunately, Xbox emulation is simply one of the most difficult to implement which is quite ironic considering Des praised it for being the most easiest to develop for. Go figure. There we go, that was my quick setup guide for the Zemu emulator. Now if you found today's video helpful or it saved you some time, slam me a thumbs up and if you want to keep up to date, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.